Hi guys, today's discussion is about aggregate planning, specifically the topic master production schedule. By definition, it indicates the quantity and timing for a product or a group of products. Inputs are your beginning inventory, which is the actual inventory on hand from the preceding period. Second is the forecast, which is a statement about the future. And last is your customer orders or the quantities already committed to customer. For our outputs, we have the projected inventory on hand, which is the difference between the inventory from the previous week and the current week's requirements. Second is the master production schedule, which indicates the quantity and timing of planned production. And lastly, your uncommitted inventory, or also known as the available to promise inventory. For our example, the weekly forecast for industrial pumps are 30 for periods 1 to 4 and 40 for periods 5 to 8. So we are given the following customer orders as follows. So we have 33, 20, 10, 4, and 2, 4 weeks, 1, to f uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now the inventory on hand at the beginning of the period is 64. So we want to create a master production schedule having a value of 70 and available to promise payable. Now for our solution, so we will be uh, writing the following columns for our table. So we have your period, your beginning inventory, the requirement or yung ating customer order, the net inventory before MPS, the MPS, and the projected inventory. So we have for the eight uh, eight periods. Now take note that uh, we are given that the beginning inventory is 64. Ngayon, for our uh, given, so the forecast now for uh, periods 1 to 4 is 30 and for periods 5 to 8, the forecast is 40. Now, for our solution in, uh, in master production schedule, we have to compare your actual customer order and the forecast. So, whichever between the two is higher, so yun yung gagamitin nating actual requirement for the master production schedule. So, if we are going to go back to our given data, so we can see that period 1 is 33. So, mas malaki siya doon sa ating forecast of 30. And then, looking at the data uh, after that, so yung week 2 to 5, so wala na siyang mas malaki doon sa forecast. So, ibig sabihin, mas malaki na yung forecast value. So, yun yung gagamitin natin as our uh, requirement for our table. So, balikan lang natin siya. So, beginning inventory is 64. Your requirement is 30. And then, the rest of 2, 3, and 4 period is also 30. And then, for periods 5 to 8, so since 5 lang ang yung, yung may laman, so we will be uh, putting a value from 6 to 8 kasi forecast naman siya for uh, 8 period. So, therefore, f uh, week 5 to 8, so we have a forecast of 40 units. So, the net inventory before MPS, so this is just the difference between your beginning inventory and your requirement. So, 64 minus 33, so we have 31. MPS is blank or zero. So, kasi we only give value to the MPS column if your net inventory before MPS becomes negative. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, mas malaki yung requirement than your uh, beginning inventory for that particular period. So therefore, our projected inventory after uh, after those calculations, so for period 1, so we have 31. So this will be carried over to the second period, period 2. So we have 31 units on hand for the start of period 2. And the net inventory before MPS is 34 minus 30, so we have 1. So again, no value for MPS. And then our projected inventory for the next period is 1. So, beginning inventory is 1. 1 minus 30 is now negative 29. So, ito na yung time that we will be writing a value under the MPS column. 
So, we have an MPS value of 70. So, given siya in the problem. So, 70. So, for our projected inventory, again, we are just going to get a difference between your net inventory before MPS and your MPS value. So, that's negative 29 and 70. So, you have a projected inventory of 41 units. So, which will be carried over onto the next period, uh, period which is period 4. So, 41. 41 minus 30 is 11. And again, no value for MPS. So, 11 units for period 4. Beginning inventory of 5 is 11. 11 minus 40 is again negative 29. So, may MPS tayo ulit. So, negative 29 plus 70. So, meron na lang tayong inventory of 41 units. Then, 41 units minus 40. We have 1. So, no MPS. Then, for week 7, so negative 39. We have an MPS at week 7. So, we have 31 remaining units. So, 31 units for period 8. 31 minus 40 is also negative 9. So, meron din tayo ulit MPS dito. And the inventory after week 8 or period 8 is 61 units. So, take note of the periods where we have MPS values. So, these are on week 3, week 5, and week 7 and 8. So, this is your master production schedule. Then, for our available to promise table, so, we are going to write the following information in again in a tabular form again. So, we have your period, the customer order, the MPS, and the available to promise. So, again, these are for week, uh, weeks 1 to 8. So, again, nakatabulate tayo ulit dito. And then, for our customer order, so, ito na yung ating actual given information from our example. So, we have 33, 20, 10, 4, and 2 for periods 1 to 5. And then, we will be writing uh, the MPS values for each respective week we have taken, uh, taken kanina. So, we have at week 3, at week 5, and week 7, and 8. Now, to compete for the available to promise, take note that there is a beginning inventory of 64 units. So, we deduct 33 from 64. So, yun yung ating initial customer order at week 1. And this will have a result of 31. So, since 31 is still uh, greater than 20, yung customer order natin at week, uh, at week 2, so, we can still accommodate that. So, yung ating 31 minus 20. So, this will have an ending balance of 11. So, ang target kasi ni Available to Promise is to maximize the current uh, available inventory. Okay? Now, take note na yung ating pagmamaximize ng inventory ay kapag meron lang tayong sobra from the current uh, inventory or yung ating actual master production schedule. Now, going back to our solution, so again, we have 64 beginning inventory and we combine the orders for week 1 and 2 since accommodated pa naman siya ni beginning inventory. So, 64 minus 33 minus 20. So, ibig sabihin, we have an available to promise of 11 units to uh, sa ating mga Customer. So, meron tayong available of 11 units by week 1. Okay? Now, dun naman sa ating week 3, so we have 10 customer orders. And then, meron tayong master production schedule at that specific time, 70. However, if we look doon sa week 4, so meron siyang customer order na, na 4 units din. So, since... Obvious naman na mas malaki yung ating MPS than our customer order, we can still accommodate yung 4 units na order at week 4. So, kasi, again, you want to maximize the uh, the MPS value. So, yung katabi ng week na yon kung saan may MPS, pwede natin siyang kuhanin. At yung maging excess doon is your available to promise. So, 70 minus 10 and 4. So, meron tayong available of 56 units. So, umbaga, kasi si week 4, wala siyang MPS nung time na yon. Si week 5, may MPS na doon sa week na yon. So, hindi ko na isasama yung 2 units doon sa aking pagma-minus 4, week 3 and 4. So, again, 
sa MPS at week 5. So, we have 70 and 2. So, we have available to promise of 68 units. So, yung ating week 7 and 8. So, since wala tayong customer order, so, bring down lang yung values doon. So, we have 70 units to promise by week 7 and another 70 units to promise by week 8. So, kung sakaling mang magkaroon ng variation with our orders or yung mga forecasts, so ito yung mga available units natin na pwede natin i-commit sa customers. Okay? So, this ends the uh, discussion for available to promise. So, again, and for the master production schedule, if you have further questions, comments, or suggestions, so just feel free to comment them down below or you can reach me on my Facebook Messenger uh, uh, if you have further queries. Pero I suggest mas maganda sa comment section para mas makita rin ng ating ibang viewers. So again, I'll see you again on our next video and lectures. Thank you for watching.